Bro, this my guys. Know that they fly. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. CJ Ack. Now I got a roll with ice. Bro, these brothers, my guys. Know that they fly. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. CJ Ack. Now I got a roll with ice. Hey guys, this is Paul with Spirit Prep Pals. I'm here with Danny. We, we drove down this weekend just to kind of see how he's running things and to hang out. But right now we're going to cover how to euthanize rats uh, the correct way when you're euthanizing them for feeders. So um, Danny's going to walk me through the steps. I'm just going to let him tell me every step of the way. I'll get him to explain the actual canisters that he uses, the uh, valves that he uses and things like that. So the first thing I do is go into one of our grow out tubs and I look at the sizes and I know next week I've got to feed some live, so I'm not going to take the small ones. So I'm going to take the biggest ones that are getting ready to right at that small rat size going into the medium. And those are the ones that I'm going to use nice to make our frozen thawed for, you know, it's our extras, it's our overflow. Yeah, I know I'm short. This is our males. Let's see, you're small. Two. I weaned out a bunch the other day, but we're gonna make a small little batch. Because out of all the garrots I have every week, I try to make at least 10 to 20 frozen thawed. I don't feed anything smaller than a, or bigger than a, a small rat to any of our snakes, even our big boas. They're good. I'll get, I'll let a, a few get a little bit bigger um, before I euthanize them for the boas. But even then, they're getting a small to medium size every uh, two weeks, and they do just fine. So that's one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I got some in here that are just weaned, so I'll let them get a little bit bigger. And whatever doesn't get fed off next week will get euthanized because we've got a bunch of litters growing up that are. Getting ready to get moved over some of these grow out tubs. That's a good. All right, one more. Come here. Yeah, one more. Oh, you're a good one. And one more. All right. So once I get them all separated and put in the bucket, I'll get this tub. That are wonderful. So what size? This is a, is it's a five pound. Five pound canister. Okay. And actually this setup right here, um, Shane from Small Town Exotics had a video and linked it on his YouTube, uh, the Amazon link, and it works perfect. Okay. Because it tells you what your PSI is. You always want your PSI sitting around 10 for the airflow. And then this one will tell you how much PSI is left in the tank. Okay. And we've had going on six months using this one, and it's still got a lot well, so left it in it. over 10 pounds. Yeah, it's got a lot left in it. Or 10 PSI. Yeah. So then I'll line the bottom with some paper towels for them. So how often do you find that you have to actually uh, do this for your rat colonies? For the rat colonies, I'm doing frozen thought about... At least every two weeks, if not sometimes every week. It just depends on how the females. They're like, you know, we got some pregnant ones in here. Uh, you know, these ones got a small litter in them. So it just depends on the way I'm feeding the snakes. And guys, you know, the, the disclaimer in this is that, you know, this is viewer discretion. Yeah. Um, this is part of keeping reptiles. If you choose to grow your own rodents, I mean, the rodents at one point are alive, so... Um, I mean, it's it's the circle of life. Right. Honestly, this is my least favorite part doing this. It's a necessity for the snakes, and also it gives us a surplus of frozen thought. And people that buy snakes from us local, if right. they need feeders, they you know, we hook them up. They'll come if they want frozen thought, or if they want live, they'll come and we'll help them out. But yeah, I... I it's not something I enjoy doing. Yeah, the, um, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, the CO2 gas actually just puts them to sleep. Yeah. Um, and it's better than some of the more traditional older ways that people used to use. And uh, this is the way to go. 
So I'll turn it on. And I have an air hole on this side that when I start it, I'll take the tape off, run it for 10 seconds. So it pushes the oxidants inside the tub out okay. and then I'll close it, let it run for 20 seconds and then we shut it off. So I'm getting it right to that 10 PSI mark. And the thing I love about this valve is you can see it, but it has a nice on and off valve right here. Okay. So then, uh, and if you're doing a bunch or a lot, you want to have some ventilation. We're just doing this one. So I'm not worried right. about it. If I was doing, sometimes I come here and I've had to do this, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times in a row. I'll open up the window, put the fan out, get some ventilation going in here. Cause you know, you don't, yeah, you don't want just to air ventilate, but we're yeah. just doing this one. So that's fine. So open that up, turn it on. It's about that 10 seconds that we're coming up. And I like, I like to film things like this just for instructional purposes so that when people do want to grow their own rats, um, you know, there has to be some sort of medium for them. It so, is. You know, just so that this is more educational as it is useful. So, and it's purposeful. It is. It, again, like I said, this is my least favorite part of this, right. you know, but it's, you know, it, we, we do it. We have to do it. But right. yeah, I don't enjoy it. Because we honestly, we cherish all the rats and animals that we do have. We feed them well. They're well taken care of. Yeah, the so we know what's really going clean. into the their feed. We know what's going in, you know, that we're feeding our snakes. Uh, they're, they're treated. They get a lot of treats. They get vegetables, you know, throughout the week. Broccoli, carrots, uh, cabbage. So they're, they're well taken care of. They're not just... You know, we don't just see them as like, ah, oh, y'all are just feed whatever. We don't care about y'all. No, they're, they're well taken care of. Exactly. So we'll let that sit for a few more minutes okay. and then they'll go there officially, then they'll pass away and then we'll go through the packaging portion. Okay. No, it is. And you know, the, the snakes got to eat and yeah. like I was saying earlier, we know what we're putting into our rodents and Same. therefore we know what quality rodents are going into our snakes or whatever customers that are buying from us right. are feeding them. It's, they're, they're getting high quality rodents. It's not something that you're going to pet smart or your local pet store that's yeah i'm gonna buy a live rodent you don't know what they're feeding them right you they don't. could be feeding them just you know whatever but here they're getting a high quality high protein diet and they're very healthy that's good i can tell okay i'm gonna go run in and get the packaging and we'll do the vacuum okay. seal process and we'll go from there all right well, right now you're cutting out bags for is that a food saver yep to do the okay. vacuum seal so if you're making your frozen thawed and you're going to feed them, use it within a month. You can just get the freezer, the, the freezer Ziploc bags from the grocery store and that'll work fine. But if you're going to store them for a while and you're not going to use them, you know, for vacuum seal, they're good for up to a year. Okay. You know, I wouldn't, I'm not going to keep anything longer. Well, nothing's going to last that long anyway. Right. But if I had to store frozen thawed in there, vacuum sealed, I'm going to use them before years up after a year. I'm not going to use them. I'll, I'll toss them, but that we never reach that limit anyways. Okay. Come there. Seal it. And then we'll do the second one. Go ahead and knock them both out right away. Right. But vacuum sealing was the way to go, in my opinion. I would think so. It'll keep yeah. the food fresher. It does. Longer. I like it. You know, like in companies longer. like Big Cheese, you know, mm -hmm. up in Dallas, they do theirs. Their stuff comes in. It's all vacuum sealed. Okay. Right. And there was 13, so we'll do one with six and one with seven. Two. 
always make sure that you know nothing's got that happens and you poop on them yeah so I'm not putting any you know anything dirty in there it's four five Six. We'll do seven in the first, and we'll do six in the last one. Okay. That's eight. Sorry. And even if anything, I always make sure everything's nice and clean in there. All right. So we got seven. Pull that up. Yeah, it'd be nice if I had a bigger <laughs> work area, but you know, now there's you only use, so many plugs in the got. other room and you use what you got. Right. And once I get them up, I'll kind of spread them out. Just like that back here. Yep. Well, like I said, these will be good in there. If you had to leave them in there for a year, they'd be good for a year. But That's really the way to go. It is. I prefer I mean, that. I could go. We Sometimes they don't even stay in there long before we use them. Yeah. So I could use the, the Ziploc freezer bags from the store, but I prefer this because it's just better. So then I'll write the quantity that's on there. They're smalls. And the date. And today is the 17th. So that's the first one, and then we will knock out the second one real quick. And it's the only recognized way to use, euthanize your rodents, um, especially if you're doing it for food. And then when you store them like this, one of the things that I'm always considered, considering is, uh, so if I buy frozen rodents and I don't get to use them because the packaging isn't vacuum sealed. So I love getting my rodents with vacuum sealed packaging inside of it. And that way I know that they're going to stay fresh. Yeah, exactly. Some you'll get them, they'll be in the Ziploc bags. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to use them, you know, fairly soon, you know, right. within four, five, six months, that's perfectly fine. But you know, if you're buying in bulk and right. it's going to be there for a while. Before we started breeding rodents, you know, we were buying from cold-blooded and big cheese. And I would buy about every, probably every three or four months. Mm -hmm and they would last three or four months so i didn't matter if it, they nice if they came back and sealed or not they were going to get used in the you know the amount of time that i wanted them to but i know if i can the rats start going crazy and i get a lot of stuff it's they're good for you know a while up in the freezer exactly and that way the Six, rodents are well, um dying in vain they're actually being you know, used as a source of protein for the the snakes or reptiles, and uh, they're not going yeah. to waste. And like you said earlier, when you get to a certain amount of snakes, and you're like, all right, I have to feed, because I think a lot of people get overwhelmed when they first get in the hobby and start buying animals. Like, oh, like this snake's cool. Okay, now I've got ten. Okay, well, when they're juveniles, sub adults, you're feeding them once a week. So now you've got. 10 snakes you got to feed every week so that's yeah. on average 40 rats a month a month you start doing the math and if especially with prices now you can go to some pet stores right now i called one because i wanted to get some new bloodlines for our rats they wanted i think it was a uh, 11 or 12 dollars for a live small rat so i just laughed at them so i'll mm. find somewhere else i'll find I'll, I'll drive an hour or two to a, to another breeder it's to go get some live yeah. before I pay $12 for a live. And you go to PetSmart. If you want to buy a, a frozen small rat, you're going to pay seven, eight, nine dollars Right. And if you have 30 snakes, for example, and you know, okay, I need to feed 30 of them. That's 120 I'm going to need a month. Get yourself a small, you know, build a small rack, cycle them through there. And mm -hmm. even if you know you only have, well, I only have five or six, but I'd like to be some rows. Okay, build a little three level right. and have a small ASF colony 
with a couple of grow out tubs for your males and females because you know your ASFs once they're not going to get so big like rats do. Yeah, you let rats go, and next thing you know, shit, I've got a large or yeah, a jumbo or a colossal. I can't feed that to ball python. Exactly. But your ASFs, if they're legal in your area, yeah, let it grow. Full size ASF, ball python will slam that, no problem. Right, right. So love ASFs. Well, but then once we package them, we'll go pop them. I'm trying to show you all the entire process. I mean, just so that you know that, you know, these, this is what people do for their reptiles. And so he has a yeah. dedicated freezer. Yeah, this freezer one, is, <laughs> this freezer is just for the animals. Cause a lot of times we'll, uh, we make our own dog food. We do a raw dog food diet for our dogs. Okay. So that stuff gets stored in here. There's none in here right now. We're getting ready to do a run, but that's why there's beef logs and turkeys and chicken and deer organ meat. And that's all stuff that's going to get ground up for dog food, but they'll get placed in here with all the other frozen thawed. You know, this is back from February. You know, I got some from, you know, December 18th and still got some from late last year, you know, some yeah. from, big cheese, some weans that we had for our hatchlings while we were still waiting for, you know, a lot of the colonies to start producing. Cause when you're feeding, you know, 70 or eight, 70 to 80 hatchlings a week, sometimes you need to supplement. But now we've got our production up to the point to where, guess what? We don't have to buy from anybody all right. at all. That's so perfect. we <laughs> spend about, we got to, well, so how much do you spend on uh, your Missouri food? So, I, I would say per month. Per Missouri per month to feed all the ones we got in there. I'd say maybe 60. Okay. 60 bucks a month. It's not bad. The the pine for the 10 cubic feet, they're, you know, $9. Mm -hmm. And some change at our local store. Um, every time we do a full cleaning, I'll go through about two of those so that's about 69 70 dollars a month yeah pretty much so about 60 bucks yeah because if we're doing two four six eight yeah so about 60 bucks so say 120 bucks okay and then also even the the wood chips the horse pellets that we use those are seven dollars for a 50 pound bag that's not and bad I've got a trash can full here that's probably got, you know, I don't know. That's probably a hundred and something pounds in there. Probably about 150 pounds. And okay. that stuff will, I, we don't put that much in there. And then the powder, the horse PDZ powder that we put in there, it's very little. This bag, I think the last time I bought this one about six months ago. Okay. So that lasts a really long time because you, you use it very sparingly in there. So all in all, about a hundred and say 140 nice. a month that we're spending on this because we'll supplement with some uh high protein puppy chow to give them in there and then we're doing the vegetables the carrots okay. broccoli um cabbage some apples here and there i mean just giving them high quality stuff so say still, 140 it's, it's a month and then you multiply that times 12 right right so I'm not doing the math right now, but you know, 1400 probably throughout the year. Man, that's a lot cheaper you know, than what we spent on uh, rodents last year. Well, and I think it was 2022 when we finally decided like, hey, we're doing the whole LLC thing. And I did the mm -hmm. taxes and saw the amount that we spent on frozen thought and live feeders. It was north of six, $7,000. Yeah, I was going to say that. You know, when I'm dropping a $1,800 to $2,000 order at Big Cheese Rodents every three to four months, and then I'm going to someone local to buy, you know, because we have probably like seven or eight that will only eat live. Right. So then I'm going to spend five bucks, $40 a week just on those live ones. Mm -hmm. That stuff adds up over quickly. time. So you know, say I'm spending $1,400, $1,500 a year just on these five racks to keep them going. And I don't have to worry about buying anything and then i can supplement for our you know our customers that buy local from us hey you need you know pick up an asf here and there you know you're good to go yeah so it's it comes out 
Oh yeah, this one I got to fix. But it works out for us. Well, it sounds good. Well, guys, um, I'm glad that Danny was able to show us that, um, you know, how he basically, the, the whole walkthrough for how he euthanizes rats, stores them, and shared a little bit about the financials behind, you know, how much he spends per month, how much he spends per year. Um, guys, I'm trying to tell you, the better quality rats or rodents that you can feed your snakes, the better off your snakes will be. 100%. And we always talk about the health of everything and the enrichment, but this is the best thing you can do. If you do not feed good quality rodents, then your snakes will meet an early demise. Mm -hmm. And so that's, we, they're our pets, the snakes are. The rodents are under our care. So just like anything else, um, you don't wanna cause them any undue stress or harm. So that's why using the CO2 gas is the best way to do it. Um, it is the most recognized way to do it. I know that everybody doesn't like it, but if that's your, if that's the way you feel, then maybe keeping snakes isn't for you. Um, but if it is, then this is the best way to do it other than just buying frozen thawed until the economic cost of doing so just outweighs everything. I mean, because it can get insurmountable guys. Yeah. And another thing too, in your area, you know, reach out. There's plenty of, uh, Facebook groups you know, that you can go in there and look for local rodent breeders. So do that and reach out to your local rodent breeder and, you know, support them before you go buy from, you know, the big chain stuff because you don't know what they're feeding those rodents. If you get a good local breeder and get to know them, you know you're getting good quality stuff for your snakes. Exactly. Well, hey, guys, um, if nothing else, I thank you for tuning in to this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, guys, enjoy the time that you have with your reptiles. Enjoy the time that you have with your friends like like Danny. Oh yeah. All right guys, thank you. Ooh, these brothers, my guys, know that they fly, know that they ride or die. I keep playing on my side, CJ Ike, now I'm gonna roll with ice. Ooh, these brothers, my guys.